Hello, my name is Ryan over at Summit Hydraulics. Today we're going to be installing our electric rear remote valve kit, and this is going to go on a Coyote CK2610. Uh, this machine was donated to us to uh, do this installation process for you folks. Uh, our good friends over at Southwest Equipment in Morristown, Arizona were uh, kind enough to lend this machine to us. Um, if you guys need any implements, tractors, or any other parts, please take a look at them. Uh, we have a link in our description below and they will be happy to help you folks. First thing we're gonna do here, we're gonna go through our parts list, make sure we have all the components and all the fittings that are on the list. Uh, that way we can make sure that our installation is pretty smooth and uh, you know we can get right into it. So we're gonna make sure we have all four of our spools, which are the valves that are gonna mount to our manifold block. We've got switch, we've got the hardware, the brackets, uh, wiring harness, quick disconnects, um, everything that we're going to need to make sure that we are able to install this properly. Moving along here, we're gonna follow the instructions uh, that were provided with the kit. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to install each of these plugs into the pressure and tank port on the manifold block itself. You'll notice the block has two ports set on each side. We will only be using one set of ports today so we'll go ahead and install our plugs and plug those off. Now remember, once we get into the installation of the fittings, we wanna make sure we lubricate these O-rings with a little bit of hydraulic oil, just a dab or two. Make sure that they are lubricated, that way when we go to install them, we don't risk tearing or damaging the O-ring as we install these. We want these to go in smooth to reduce the likelihood of any kind of leak or seepage. And we will repeat this step with every single one of these hydraulic adapters that have an O-ring. Number two, we're going to start installing our spools onto the valve manifold block itself. Each spool comes with a cardboard protector plate. After you remove this protector plate, be careful not to lose the series of four O-rings. That plate is just there to protect our sealing surface and keep those O-rings from uh, getting lost during shipment or anything like that. So we will go ahead and install our each spool along with all of our adapters and quick disconnects. And then we will go ahead and get started on mounting.
I'm just gonna remove the seat here to give us some easy access to the power beyond. That way when we're installing the hoses, we can really get a good look at where we're gonna connect to. It's relatively simple, four bolts. Fasten this seat down into the frame, remove those four bolts, and we should be able to just lift it right on out. Okay, at this point, we've got the valve mounted to the ROPS. We're gonna start doing the plumbing. Uh, I've identified the power beyond as this port right here on your loader valve. You've got the four lines that run up to the loader for the curl, the tilt, the raise, and the lower. We're gonna go ahead and remove this bolt along with the bolt on the other side and take this hard line completely out. Now, this is high pressure coming out of this port and our hose that attaches to the P port on the summit valve will connect to this side. And then we have the hose coming off the T port on the summit valve that will return to tank on the other side of this hard line is where that hose is gonna connect, effectively completing your power beyond loop. After we do that, we'll go ahead and do the wiring and we'll get into the next section. All right, at this point, we're going to start routing the hoses to connect to the return port. Uh, because I've got it mounted on the left side of the ROPS here, we're gonna go through this left side, and then we'll kind of loop around back to the right side of the tractor. And this will be the return that goes back to tank. A good way to do this is to keep your, your hose fittings where the adapter screws in loose to give you the swivel action when you're installing this and to make installation easier so you can turn these hoses in the correct orientation to get your 90 degree to connect to this port. You can also leave the opposite side, the JIC that is connected to the valve manifold block itself, leave that loose as well. Thread them in maybe halfway, but let them swivel and that'll give you a lot of play to be able to turn your hoses, get the orientation you need, and it'll make installation a whole lot easier. All right, now we've got the bolts out of the power beyond line. We're gonna move that completely out of the way. And then we will connect our pressure port in here and our return line to the tank on the top. All right, what we've actually done is we've connected the 90 degree side to the power beyond to feed the pressure for the summit valve. We found that uh, routing this line is a lot easier to connect this 90 degree first before you connect it to the P port on the summit valve. So we've gone ahead and connected the 90 degree here. I'll go ahead and start feeding the other side, the straight fitting that's gonna connect to the P port on the summit valve, and we'll get power that way. Just continuing to feed this through on the back side of the frame where the actual seat gets connected and bolted in and we'll just route this hose along the back side of the three-point arms to keep them out of the way. All right, at this point, we have gone ahead, reattached the hose. We'll snug this up with a wrench. Then we can continue on with the electrical, and we are on the home stretch. Now we're gonna remove this joystick handle so we can install the Summit Hydraulics two-button joystick. So these joysticks come with several different bushings to fit on several different size of rods. Uh, you can see here I'm removing this first bushing with a set of needle nose pliers. Remove that and that will give us enough room to install this joystick onto this lever. At that point we can reinsert our fastener screws, tighten them down with the Allen wrench, and this joystick will be solid, fastened directly to this lever. Um, when you're operating a grapple with a joystick like this, uh, one of these switches would open the grapple, the other one would close the grapple. These can be used either way. Either one can open or close the grapple depending on how you have the switch connected to the control valve uh, where the solenoid connectors are. 
Another way you can switch the operation of this is to switch the work lines around. And you, that would enable you to switch to whatever function you prefer and which switch is going to open and close the grapple. All right, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and crimp our eyelids onto our wire for the joystick and the three button rocker switch. We'll go ahead and set the eyelid directly onto the wire. Use our crimping tool here. Go ahead and crimp this. Do the same thing for the positive as well as the red and the black wire for both switches. And we will wire these directly to the battery. Here we have the three button rocker box that's going to be included in your electric rear remote valve kit in a three spool vari variation. Uh, we do offer this in a single button, two button, three button, or a four button variation, depending on how many spools that you would like to have in your kit. These buttons are all momentary. So if it's going to be operating, let's say a cylinder, you would press the button one way, it would retract the cylinder. You would push the button the other way and it's going to extend the cylinder. Whenever you let go of these buttons, it's going to return to center. And at that point, it'll hold the cylinder in the position that it's in. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're going to install the rocker box onto the ROPS. The easiest way to do this is to remove this L-shaped bracket from the rocker box itself. So we'll take these screws out of both sides, remove the rocker box, and then we will proceed to tighten down these fastening screws that hold the bracket for the rocker box to sit on. The easiest way to do this is to remove the rocker box completely, and that'll give you good access to be able to get a wrench on these on both sides. Now that we've got the hardware fastened, we're gonna go and install the rocker box back on. And we'll just go ahead and slide that back in and replace the screws. And at this point, we are ready to mount this to our ROPS. All right, now that we've got the switch box mounted to its side of the mounting plate, we are tightening it up and finishing the actual mounting bracket that goes to. Uh, we've got this fastened. Now we will install the other piece that has the rocker box attached to it with a series of bolts. Um, it's adjustable, so you can put the rocker box uh, mounted anywhere in this series of bolts here with the, uh, the set of two screws that are supplied in the kit. Ready. All right, just finishing up fastening the rocker box to the bracket. And at this point, it is sturdy. It's on there, ready to go. We can start routing the wires up to the front and we'll go ahead and wire this directly to the battery, just like we did the uh, two button joystick. All right, at this point, we're just wiring in the harness, connecting our co wire connectors to the solenoids. As soon as we finish this, we'll just zip tie a few of these out of the way, clean up some of the, the routing with zip ties, and then we will we'll be ready to go. These three connectors here are gonna go to the rocker box. We will put the connectors for the joystick at the very top spool. And that will allow you to use the top spool with the joystick. And of course, the last three spools are gonna be connected to the three button rocker. Here we are connecting the wiring harness to the joystick. We'll use a couple zip ties to get this wire up out of the way and we're ready to go. This rear remote valve kit is a very versatile addition to your tractor. If you have any concerns or questions, uh, we have a vlog on the website that you can check out. 
Uh, don't forget to leave a comment on the video um, and either give us a chat or uh, give us a call at 1-800-325-3695. Thank you very much and we'll see you next time.